Good morning, everyone, for December 27th, 2013. I want to bring the story to all of your attention. Bear with me. I'm suffering from a, a cold and the flu and the fever and chills and a stuffy head. But this is so very important. Here's the headline. This is America's most apocalyptic, violent city. And you probably never heard of it. There are more murders in this American city than in all of Baghdad. Bear with me, friends. We all know about Detroit. We've heard the sad story of this dwindling Midwestern city's deterioration into desperate insolvency. We know how they filed for the largest municipal bankruptcy in American history, with debt estimated at 18 to 20 billion dollars following the collapse of the auto industry. The city, which was number one on Forbes' most miserable cities list, has 78,000 vacant buildings, 40% of the streetlights do not work, and more than half of the city's parks have closed since 2008. It takes an average of one hour for the police to respond to any call. But this story is not about Detroit. It's about Detroit's failing and forsaken neighbor, 66 miles to the northwest. It's a story about Flint, Michigan, where my focus is with my ministry, our ministry, the city of Flint. More murders than Baghdad. You can see the houses. It's the site I see on a daily basis. Flint was the birthplace of General Motors in 1908, according to journalist and Flint native Gordon Young. 47, the city flourished on a strong economy built around the auto industry. By the 1960s, its per capita income for a city of its size was one of the highest in the world, Young says. This is really hard for people to even, even fathom now. Before the Great Recession and at peak employment, there were 80,000 jobs for G from GM alone. In addition, there was a satellite system of parts suppliers for General Motors who sprung up around the factory, supplying thousands of more jobs. Well, I know this very well. Today, there are only 4,000 General Motors jobs and an average of five people leave the city every day. The memories of the old Flint made this decline even more dramatic for me, Young said. The Buick City, Buick City plant is the largest brownfield in the U.S. now because it's an industrial site with potential toxic environmental damage. Attempts to resell and repurpose the land are highly risky. Flint now drowns in the hell that has become of much of America's Rust Belt. The New York Times labeled it Murder Town, USA, and said it was synonymous with faded American and industrial power. Uh, there's a family that's been evicted. In a Slate article, Young wrote, after the loss of nearly 80,000 General Motors jobs over the last three decades, Flint has landed on the Forbes list of most miserable cities and fast dying cities. Filmmaker Michael Moore is a Flint native and made the 1989 documentary Roger and Me about the city, which was recently inducted into the National Film Registry. Moore said of his hometown, the only difference between your town and Flint is that the Grim Reaper just likes to visit us first. This is the reality, brothers and sisters of Flint, Michigan. In Young's book, Teardown, Memoir of a Vanishing City, he chronicles his return home after being away for 15 years. One synopsis of the book reads, there are desolate blocks where only a single house is occupied and survivors brandish shotguns and monitor police scanners. While the population plummets, the murder rate soars. Throw in an arson spree, 
in a racially motivated serial killer, and Young wonders if Flint can survive. In the book, Young compares bright childhood memories of Catholic schooling and free swimming lessons to the grim presence of abandoned houses and shuttered schools. I went back to my old neighborhood, he said. It's one of those neighborhoods where outsiders wouldn't even believe it was the United States. So many burned out houses, houses with trees growing through them. Some of these areas would look totally abandoned, but in fact, they're not, he said. A third of the city has been left abandoned. If all of the abandoned houses, vacant lots, and buildings were consolidated, there would be 10 square miles of blight in the city. Young said you can buy houses by the dozens on eBay. You can get houses for $500. Flint is a small city of about 100,000 people. In 2012, Flint statistics per 100,000 people were 62 murders, 106 forcible rapes, and 662 robberies. The murder rate alone is higher than Baghdad's. The numbers have earned it the number one spot on Business Insider's most dangerous cities list for 2010, 2011, and 2012. Violent crimes in total, including murder, non-negligent manslaughter, rape, robbery, and aggravated assault reached 2,729,005. The poverty rate is over 40% and the percentage of adults with a high school degree is roughly 83%. A 24-7 Wall Street special report stated that like Detroit, Flint has suffered economically in recent years. The median household income was just 23,380 in 2011, the second lowest of all 555 cities measured by the United States Census Bureau. Photojournalist Brent Carlson visits Flint whenever he has the means. He wrote, with close to one-third of the city's homes vacant, those that are left exist in a whirlwind of violence, abandoned homes, and financial struggles unlike many other places in the United States. And here is a picture of The Rock, located in Flint, Michigan. I know you've seen this um, on my videos before. God help us save Flint. In a weird piece, documentary maker Zachary Kinapari said, Flint is an incredibly unique place historically. It is the American dream turned into the American nightmare. Flint is emblem emblematic of a deeper story in America, only one of the many similar tales to emerge from the once thriving, now deteriorating West Belt of the United States. These manufacturing and industrial hotspots spanning from Albany, New York, west across Ohio, Indiana, and through Michigan were once the great symbols of American innovation and economic prosperity. Today they're mere vestiges of bygone era, of a bygone era that's been eclipsed by new economic power centers like Wall Street and Silicon Valley. Proof is in the numbers. Of the 15 American cities that have lost the largest share of their population since 1960, 14 are in the industrial Northwest and Upper Midwest. Flint, like Detroit and Gary, lost about 20% of its population during the first decade of the 21st century. In the 1960s, Flint's population was double what it is today. I'll put the link below, you'll have a uh, be able to follow this. Thankfully, there's another side to the story of a depression and decay, a side of the city that's easy to forget by focusing on the despair alone. There's a spirit, a certain resilience, and an undeniable loyalty, Kapari said, for a place that is so deeply dysfunctional. It has an incredible amount of identity. People are proud to be from there. And you can see why. The everyday people of Flint refuse to be defeated. Flint native and photographer Justin uh, Clanton, 27, said, I love it here. Crime is a, <coughs> I won't say the word, but hey, not every place is perfect. 
There are a few other places I would want to live. I'd choose the worst city in America over a ritzy area any day. Locals hate that the only story told about Flint is a negative one. There are people trying very hard to make this city a better place, Young said. People who have not given up, and I have not given up on the city of Flint. We just had a major ice storm, uh, mid-Michigan, Flint, and the uh, surrounding areas out of power. I spent Christmas uh, Day after we went to our families uh, for a Christmas uh, day get together. It was two o'clock in the morning coming home from Flint in a driving snowstorm. This is where our ministry, Trumpet of God Ministries, is our main focus along with Detroit. But, uh, so many people in need, no power, no electricity now, and they're slowly getting that restored. And the homeless, even the, the Red Cross had set up warming shelters. But this is where, when I'm not on YouTube, where I spend a great deal of my time every day. And I have not given up on the city of Flint because our God is an awesome God and he's the God of this city. TrumpetofGodMinistries.com I'll put the link below.